this week in the field, abusing our gear, and then maintaining it. Hi everyone, I'm Scott Davenport. Welcome to In The Field. So today's a Q&A episode, and it centers around abusing our gear, or putting our gear in harm's way, and then taking care of our gear and maintaining it. Uh, several questions had come in that they all started to kind of form this little theme here. So uh, before I get into the questions, if you have your own photo question, I'd like to hear from you. Contact me through my website, questions on the video below, Instagram, Twitter, however you like to uh, connect with me I'm in a variety of places. And I would love to hear what you're thinking about photography and maybe help you out with some type of question you have. With that, let me get into the first one. The first question came in from Bin Zhang on Instagram, and he saw a shot where I had uh, gotten a very low angle at the beach. And he was curious, well, does this put your camera in danger of the ocean, the salt spray, the water? Uh, well, the short answer is yes, it does. Now, generally, to take a step back, we're shooting at the ocean. Even if you're not right on top of the waves, there is salt spray in the air, and it is getting on and in your camera. So uh, one of the things I do is I put this lens coat thing. This is just this neoprene flexible cover that's very easy to take on and off and covers the front part of my lens. So if I'm not actively shooting, I'll cover it up and protect from salt spray. Uh, but, you know, uh, let me show you this. Actually, this is kind of cool. This was one of the sequences of the shots that I was taking. Uh, this is a little bit of a different angle than the one um, Bin Zhang was asking about. But, you know, here's this wave. I'm really low, like really my camera's like right on top of these rocks here. And um, this 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 curl of water would come around and hit these this like upward slope and throw water in the air. So you know the waves coming in, the waves coming in, and then I'm hit. Right, I've got water spots on the front of I had a, a neutral density filter on the front, so I wasn't getting on my front element. But you know that was on that part of the camera, and you know this side of the camera had gotten a few droplets. So you know what do we do about that? Uh, well, if you don't want to get you know, water spray all over your camera, well, then you don't get that close to the ocean, but you also don't get those kinds of shots. Uh, what I will do in the field immediately is with some type of dry cloth, just wipe off the major parts of the salt water, right? You don't want the water just sitting on there, especially salt water. Salt's very corrosive. So, you know, get those things off. Now, if a camera takes a hit like that, when I get back in the studio, everything comes apart. So, you know, the L bracket will come off, you know, take that piece off, take this off, take the lens off, you know, all these things have to come apart and I'm gonna let them air out. If something really got got terribly uh, terribly soaked, I'll be using a, uh, a damp cloth to kind of wipe things down. And I'll do that certainly after the fact too, if I notice any type of salt deposits. You know, they're easy to spot because most of the times our cameras are a dark color like black and the salt will show up as white deposits. We can wipe those off and clean them off. But uh, you know, certainly if I take a major hit to the camera like that, I will take it apart, let it air out overnight and uh, then you know get back to shooting the next day. So Bin Zhang, I hope that helps you out. Thanks for your question. Next question is from Marty and he asks, do you clean your gear after every shoot? Uh, so the short answer is no, I'm not that diligent. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous question, if I've gotten like, you know, some shock to the, the, the camera body, you know, a splash of a wave or some high amount of sand or dust or you know something else you know rain in the case of uh, in case of rain anything that's been more of a, other than just being outdoors for the camera uh, i will give it you know a brush down uh, but as far as um you know i'm certainly not cleaning the sensor after for every uh shoot if i notice i have sensor dust i've got one of the you know, little rockets you know just shoot the air in there and keep that from building up over time uh, what I will do is I will wipe down the front element of the glass. And so what I use for that is uh, these guys called Peck Pads. And it comes with, uh, or there's a companion product, this Eclipse Cleaning Fluid. And it's very simple to use. It doesn't take more than a couple of minutes. And so you get a square of a pad like this. I'm going to fold it in half and fold it in half again. So I get a nice, good, solid amount of uh, cloth that I can work with. I put a few drops of this fluid on there. I don't know, four or five and then just rub it down across the front of the lens a few times. It's, um, it's it, you know, as far as how it evaporates, it's kind of almost like rubbing alcohol. It's not rubbing alcohol, so don't use that on your lenses. Get something that's specific to clean optics. 
and then it is dry and it's perfect and it's nice and clean and it's very simple to do. So um, I certainly would recommend getting, you know, a, a lens cleaning kit beyond just your, you know, lint-free cloths. Those are great when you're out on location and you need something to wipe down the lens or you're shooting in an environment that is either dusty or uh, in your waterfall with a lot of water spray and you're needing to wipe down the lens continually. That's where your uh, cleaning cloths, you know, your lint-free cloths come in. But when you want to get, uh, you know, a, um, I don't know, almost like that, that brand new lens cleaning look to it where everything's just dust free and perfect. So you go pick up something like Eclipse and Peck Pads and those will do a really good job for you. All right, the last question for today, I've been holding on to this one for a while. It came in also from Instagram from Burritos for Lunch. I'm sorry it's taken me so long to get to this, but honestly, I struggled with trying to figure out how I was going to film this. So I just don't have enough space in the area that I clean my tripod. That's the question. Tripods, we abuse them a lot, and I especially do. Uh, shooting again in salt water. Salt is corrosive, even to you know non-metallic things like this. It'll eat through anything. Uh, my beach shoes are a great example. I've gone through. I can't how, count how many pairs every you know six months. I have to get a new pair because the other ones are falling apart. So I've got a portion of my tripod here because I want to point out a couple of things, and uh, I will intersperse some other uh, still clips of what I do for the full breakdown. So the first question is, you know, well, what do I do immediately after a shoot? Am I cleaning my tripod every single time I shoot the ocean? So the answer is no, I'm not cleaning it every time. But what I will do is I'll open it up, I'll extend all the legs, right? Everything all the way out. And I'll get a damp cloth and I'll wipe everything down. That's gonna get all the salt uh, spray off of the outer parts. And that's just a habit, or I'll, I'll run it underneath the hose outside before I, you know, before I come indoors. If I'm, if I'm traveling, I'll stick it in the hotel shower and rinse the thing down. Just extend everything and rinse it off, just to get the salt, you know, the bulk of the salt off of there. Now there will come a time when you need to clean your entire tripod. You have to disassemble it and take it all apart. Now one rule for me is if I get one of the lock pegs or uh, you know twist locks under water, you know, if it gets submerged in salt water, I'm talking salt water here, if it gets submerged in salt water, that's like uh, grounds for immediate cleaning. So I will continue to take this thing all the way apart. And I want to show you one part here. I twist this all the way out. And as I separate this, do this without knocking over my computer here, you're going to see these other two little plastic pieces, right? These are usually on the inside of your leg. These are important. Don't just throw these away. They're important. This is what keeps this from coming apart short of completely unlocking your lock mechanism. So now you can even see I've got a little bit here because I'm going to go clean this thing in a minute of a little bit of salt there on the insides where we have all these different, you know, the, the, the screw mechanism. I've got to get in there with a brush. I got to clean all that out. And if I sweep my finger in there, you're going to see I got a bunch of, you know, now semi dirty uh, grease that's in there. It's really just a, uh, uh, really fundamentally bicycle grease, but uh, you can buy that at any of your, uh, any of your tripod manufacturers will recommend something for their tripods, but uh, that just helps keep the mechanism smooth. And the same thing on this side, I've got to clean out besides just cleaning inside and out, running water through everything. I've got to get a brush in there. I've got to brush out any sand particulates or dirt or dust, whatever month might be in there. Now, the only other thing I'll do, put this down for a second. There we go. Is Kind of keeping track of all these things, right? And so what I have is I have three small Tupperware containers. And so for each segment of my tripod, why do I have three containers? I have three segments of my tripod. I'll take all these guys and throw them in one bin. So at the end, I'm going to have three sets of the locks and these little plastic inserts. And that just helps me keep track which ones go with which piece. So I'll have all of these segments of leg pieces in one area and a small little bucket with all its pieces together. So when I go back to reassemble it, I'm not having to think about which piece goes where or fumbling through to figure all that out. That's just kind of keeping, keeping track of things as we take them apart and put them together. But uh, yeah, as far as the actual cleaning itself, primarily water, light soap solution. So, you know, light, uh, for me, I use a very small amount of a uh, dish detergent, something that's uh, not too uh, you know, damaging. Uh, as far as you know, or harsh, that's the word I'm looking for. It's not too harsh. And just make sure I soak everything in water, run through water through the inside, on the outside, wipe it down a bit, and then I let it sit apart overnight. And there's one other part I want to talk about too, which is the ball head. So let me clear the desk and get the ball head up here so I can show you a little bit more about cleaning that. Now for the ball head, 
and you never want to take this apart, at least for my ball head brand, they you know, never take this apart. I wouldn't even begin to <laughs> try to do that. But you want to get you know as much of the dirt and the grit off of the ball head as you can. And so what I'll do is I'll loosen up and I'll kind of slot it down. Let me loosen it a little bit more. Slot it down into one of the, I don't know what to call these, eye sockets or so forth. And then I can rotate the ball head entirely. And I can clean a lot of it. I'll move it to the other one, do the same thing. And I'm getting most of that surface. If I do that a few times, running water over it, wiping it down with a clean cloth, that gets a lot, if not all, of the dust that's out of there. And then once it dries out, it's nice and smooth and fluid. So burritos for lunch. I am, again, apologetic for having taken so long to get to this question. But hopefully this was thorough enough that it was worth the wait. So for the tip of the week, I think it's twofold. On the one hand, don't be uh, overly protective of your gear. You know, certainly take care of it and don't arbitrarily you know, dunk it underwater to take a photo or something like that. But uh, modern cameras are, are built pretty well. My A7R is not weather sealed, but it can deal with you know, a small amount of spray or a splash of water, you know, a puff of dust. It's not going to fall apart and stop working because of that. On the opposite side, I need to be able to know that I've abused the gear a little bit, I need to clean it, I need to take care of it, go through normal maintenance, whether it be cleaning the lenses, taking the camera apart and letting, uh, letting you know, things get aired out, uh, or the tripods, making sure that those have been cleaned periodically so that you know, bad things don't build up. You know, in my case, it's salt. In your case, it might be dust or grit. So just, I think it's common sense almost. It's the, I think the, the, the challenge is being diligent enough about it to periodically clean your gear. If you're like me, you put something in your calendar that says, hey, do you need to clean your gear? And I'll either go, oh yeah, I do, and take care of it, or I know that I've already taken care of it, and I'm good for whatever interval I decide to put in the calendar. So yeah, yeah leverage the tech a little bit. Let, let, the, let the machines help you out a little bit in keeping things on track. And that does it for today's In the Field episode. Hope you've enjoyed the Q&A. If you've got questions, again, please hit me up. Contact me through my website. Comments on the video below. How would you like to get a hold of me? And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport, and happy shooting. <laughs>